We're going to get right into what thus saith the Lord. I don't want to hold you too long. We've got Sunday school coming up. Uh, the word of God will be coming from Exodus, the sixth chapter. Uh, and then we're going to skip over uh, a little bit later to uh, the eighth chapter of Deuteronomy. Uh, so uh, we're going to start in the sixth chapter. It reads, Then the Lord told Moses, and I'm, my translation may just differ a little bit. I think it's one of those New Living Bibles. It said, The Lord told Moses, Now you will see what I will do to Pharaoh. Yes, sir. When he feels the force of my strong hand, he will let the people go. In fact, he will force them to leave his land. Come on, and God said to Moses, I am Yahweh the Lord. I appear to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob as El Shaddai, or God Almighty. But I did not reveal my name, Jehovah, or Yahweh, to them. And I reaffirmed my covenant or my promise with them. Under its terms, I promised to give them the land of Canaan, where they were living as foreigners. You can be sure that I heard the groans of the people of Israel, who are now slaves to the Egyptians. And I am well aware of my promise to them. And let's keep reading verse number six. Therefore, say to the people of Israel, I am the Lord. I will free you from your own oppression and will rescue you from slavery in Egypt. I will redeem you with a powerful arm and great acts of judgment. I will claim you as my own people and I will be your God. Then you will know that I am the Lord your God who has freed you from your oppressions in Egypt. I will bring you into the land I swore to give to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. I will give it to you as your very own uh, possession. I am the Lord. So Moses told the people of Israel what the Lord had told him, but they refused to listen anymore. Uh, they had become too discouraged by the brutality of their slavery. Uh, the word of God says, Then the Lord said to Moses, Go back to Pharaoh, the king of Egypt, and tell him to let the people go, uh, uh, let the people of Israel go, uh, leave his country. But the Lord, uh, but the Lord, Moses objected, My own people won't listen to me anymore. How can I expect Pharaoh to listen? I'm such a clumsy speaker. I, I, I stutter. But the Lord objected Moses and said, uh, but, but the Lord spoke to Moses uh, and Aaron and gave them orders for the Israelites and for the Pharaoh, the king of Egypt. The Lord commanded Moses and Pharaoh to lead the people of Israel out of Egypt. That's the sixth chapter. Let us pray. Uh, dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day, God. Uh, bless this word, O oh God. Bless your people, O oh God. Bless your servant. Hide me behind your sacred cross that your saints may see all of you and none of me. I pray this prayer in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Uh, if I could just slap a paraphrase on here or, you know what, I'm going to title this with a question. It's, how do I hold on to the promise that I can't see when the situation that I do see is so bad? I know it's a little wrong, but it's, we had an extra hour this morning. How can I deal with the promise that I don't see when I'm dealing with this situation that I can see? You guys know the story that leads us up to the book of Exodus, am I right? The book of Genesis goes into Exodus and we realize that the patriarchs, those who paved the way, for the Israelites and for the Jewish custom and even for the church as a whole that began in Genesis. They got to a place where Abraham had a child by the name of Isaac and Isaac had a child by the name of Jacob and Jacob's name would later be changed to Israel but Jacob had a son by the name of Joseph which the other 12 kids or 11 sons did not like. Did I just run through Genesis real fast for him? So Joseph got all the way uh, to the point where his brothers didn't want him and they put him out and sold him to some vagabonds walking down the street and said, you can have our brother, we don't need him anymore. This is better than killing him. But Joseph ended up in Egypt. When Joseph ended up in Egypt, I'm going to fast forward you, he was uh, accused 
to rape, locked up, and set free, and then all of a sudden he finds himself through all of those situations, now the second man in charge of Egypt. Did I get y'all through that real fast? Let's keep on moving. The Bible then tells us that after Joseph did all this, he then re uh, uh, re-meets his brothers when they are hungry one day and had no food. They had to come all the way to Egypt and see Joseph to get some food, not knowing that that was their brother Joseph. If I'm confusing you, that's a good thing. Read your Bible. Read your Bible. The Bible tells me that after that, uh, Joseph reveals himself, takes off his priestly robe, Oh, don't y'all know sometimes God will make 
looks over into Canaan, and then he comes down and dies. He never got into the land, but he got to see the promise. So let's go to chapter 8 real fast. It says, let's say, be careful to obey all the commands I'm giving you today. Then you will live and multiply. You will enter and occupy the land the Lord swore to you and your ancestors. These are so many years later. This is way after Exodus. They had been in the wilderness now for 40 years, right? What should have been a 12-day journey it took 40 years. And they just walking around because of disobedience. It said, uh, remember how these 40 years humbling and testing you to prove your character. That's that character development right there. And to find out whether or not you would obey his commandments. Yes, he humbled you by letting you go hungry and then feeding you with manna. I got to keep reading. A uh, uh, food previously unknown to you and to your ancestors. He did it to teach you that the people do not live by bread alone. Let me stop right there. Y'all remember in the, in, the, in the Exodus of the journey, they, they said, we're hungry, God. We're hungry, Moses. They had nothing to eat. They were looking at their situation, and they forgot about where they were even going. They were on their way to the promised land. Do you think God is trying to move you to a higher level, but in the midst of it, just going to leave you hanging? Well, God said, God told them, he said, look, I, I never left you. You can sit back and look back over your time and your journey and realize I did not leave you. I was right there with you the whole time. Even when you decided to leave me, that's some shouting good news if I think about it on my life. Even when I turn my back on God, I, I can stand right here and look back and realize that although I turned my back and I messed up, he never left me. I got to keep on reading. He said, uh, he did it to teach you that the people are not to live on bread alone, but every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. Uh, for all these 40 years, your clothes never wore out, and you didn't even feel a blister or swell. Think about, think about it. Just a, 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 a parent disciplines a child. The Lord, your God, disciplines you for your own good. Watch this. So obey my commandments. So obey the commandments of the Lord your God, walking in his ways and fearing him. For the Lord your God is bringing you into a good land of flowing streams and pools of water with fountains and springs that gush out in the valley and the hills. It is a land uh, of wheat and barley, of grapevines, fig trees, pomegranates, of olive oil and honey. It is a land where food is plentiful, nothing is lacking. It is a land where iron is as common as stone and copper is abundant in the hills. Uh, when you've eaten your fill, be sure to praise the Lord your God for the food, uh, for the good land he has given you. But that is the time to be careful. Beware in your plenty. This is for us. Beware in your plenty. See, we've gone through the trials, but we get to a serious place in our life where we have plenty. Things got good now. He says, be careful in your day of plenty that you do not forget the Lord your God and disobey his commandments, regulations, and decrees that I give you. Uh, for when you would be, for when you would become full and prosperous uh, and, and have built fine homes to live in, you, and, and when your flocks and your herds have become very large and your silver and gold have multiplied along with everything, be careful. Do not become proud at that time and forget the Lord your God who rescued you from slavery in Egypt. Do not forget that he led us through the great and terrifying wilderness with his poisonous snakes and scorpions where it was hot and dry. Uh, and he gave you water from a rock. He fed you with men in the wilderness of food that was unknown. See, see, y'all can't, we, we don't got time to get so high and mighty that we can get about all the promise to us. Not because I'm sitting here and looking and every doctor is telling me something I don't want to hear. And everybody is rising up against me. I got Bill Collect is calling me. That's just the situation. But I'm standing, I'm standing on the promise.
they're one. God bless you. We invite everybody now to Sunday school.